This story is a folk tale, a uh, original, my own original type of folk tale-ish type story from Peru. It's called the Llama Queen, an old Peruvian folk tale, or yeah. Once upon a time, in the far-off Andes Mountains, there lived a Llama Queen, Ilari. Ilari's name meant the rainbow. And she was bent on trying to do her best to bring love and peace and harmony to her kingdom. Queen Ilari had a wise advisor in her council called Lloyd, Lloyd the Llama, who was Ilari's best friend. Oh, well, Ilari's best friend actually was Layla Llama. They'd been best friends since childhood. Today was the anniversary of Il <coughs> Ilari's taking the Llama throne, so she had Lloyd organize a great party picnic to celebrate the occasion. Lloyd, 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 is everything prepared for the feast? yelled Ilari from her palace walls which were broken down remains of an old Incan villager's hut. Almost, almost, cried Lloyd. Good, I want everything per to be perfect. This is the anniversary of my ascending the throne. Yes, cried Lloyd as he rolled his eyes. This has been the upteenth time you've reminded me that day, today. So Ilari got dressed in her finest flower crown and finest regalia and went to meet the parade. Her best friend Layla Lama was there waiting for her. How do you like my dress? asked Layla. It's beautiful, cried Ilari, but not as beautiful as mine. Well, naturally, said Layla, no one can be as beautiful as our queen. So the llama parade began, led by Lloyd, as he and the llama hornblowers and singers in front, and the queen and Layla in back, and Kawak, the chief of the llama guard, by thy side. In the procession, in, in between the procession, was Ayar, the llama high priest, to bless the procession. And so the parade went on for some time. Continued on like this for some time until they came to the shores of Hillops Lake. We have arrived, cried Ayar. And so Ayar performed the sacred dance of Inti, the sun, for the blessings of Ilari's reign. When he had finished, he approached Queen Ari, Ilari and knelt down at her side and said, May Her Majesty's reign be as splendid as the sun and long-lasting like the stones in our mother the earth. We thank you kindly, noble Ayar, Ilari said. No, let us feast. And so all the llamas went down to the lake and drank and feasted on the fresh grasses of Pachamama. The, the mother goddess of the earth. Lloyd had been ingenious. He had concocted a special strawberry fruity blend grass shake for the queen. Oh, Lloyd, it's delicious. How on earth did you come up with it? Ilari exclaimed. Well, you know, I spent a lot of time cooking. I was walking in the Strawberry field one day, and it just came to me, Lloyd said. Well, I think it's simply wonderful, cried Larry, and then Layla got up 
and she performed her special sacred llama dance she'd been working on for the event. It had loops and twirls and jumps so high it seemed as if she'd catch Inti, the sun god himself. She had bangles in her fur and little bells on her feet. She ended with a magnificent twirl and she bowed low at the queen's feet. Layla, that was amazing. Why on earth did you learn? Where on earth did you learn to do that? exclaimed the Lahari. Layla was hesitant for a while, and then she finally said, Well, you see, I learned it from Bachakamak, from across, the great god from across the western ocean. He instructed it to me in dreams and visions. He knowed me to dance it to increase the length of your reign. Well, it, it, let us hope that it works, cried Lari. It was a magnificent. Nonetheless, so the feast continued well into the night. Layla in the Lari's talking and singing and chatting among the entourage. A lama, lama minstrel named Hachan played the panpipes. <laughs> And Lloyd and another llama named Guaira because she could run super fast like the wind. That's why she was named Guaira. I think her name means like fast like the wind. They sat down with the queen and Layla was munching on strawberry grass of Lloyd's when all of a sudden... When all of a sudden Lloyd heard something in the bushes. Oops, 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 oops. Ah, 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 your majesty, Lloyd whispered. Did you hear that? No, I, I didn't hear anything, Ilari said. I'll go check it out, said, I'll go check it out, said Guaira. And she ran super fast through the bushes. And out she came again with a strange creature in her mouth. He was all pale-skinned and hairless. Only four legs, but two shorter at front, and he had a he had a hairiness underneath his nose, on his upper lip, and a strange metal head. Let me go at once. Did you hear? At once, you godless beast. Guaira, what is this strange creature? cried the queen. Guaira couldn't talk, so she dropped the man, and he fled back into the bushes. I don't know, your majesty, but there he goes. After him cried the queen, so the llama guard, led by Kawak, with Lloyd and Guaira, chased after the strange creature. They are the, the, which they were led into a strange mountain clearing where a deathly silence came over them. I have a strange feeling about this, said Lloyd. Stand firm, said Kawak. All of a sudden, who was the commander of the troops? All of a sudden, a sudden burst of these strange creatures. Many with hairy chins came out and surrounded the goblin guard. All of them pointing strange wooden and metal sticks at the llamas. Where was I? Oh, yes. Stand firm. Oh. The strange wooden metal sticks of the llamas. Out stepped a little man, the one Guaira had caught. Aha! Signor coming Don Di Pizarro will be mighty pleased with us this day, my lads. He will set a good, get a good price for these beastly creatures back in Madrid. Come on now. Let's round them up and tie them together for the long ship ride back. <laughs> The little man laughed with glee. Captain Jose! Right away, said one of the other soldiers nearby. So the strange soldiers started to try and round up the llamas and get them tied, but it proved a lot harder than he had thought. Guaira ran circles around them and dizzied them, and Kawak fought fiercely as did Lloyd. 
We can't, we can't let them, we can't let them take us, cried Lloyd. We must get back and warn the Queen. But, smash, a rifle book cracked Lloyd on the head, and he saw, and he saw no more. When he awoke, he was with Kawak and the other llamas in a strange, dark, wooden hold. Where are we? <sighs> Lloyd groaned. I don't know, said Kawak. I think these little men captured us. We must find a way to escape. However, not all the llamas were captured. Guayra had managed to run out of there and back to tell Queen Lari. What? cried Queen Lari. This is terrible. We must do something. Leila, what do you think we should do? Well, I could try to mesmerize them with the dance of Pachakamak, said so Mr. Leila. What do you think, High Priest Ayar? This is not a bad idea, Leila, said Ayar. But we must be cautious, since these, these sticks they had in their hands contain a very bad and powerful magic. Meanwhile, back on the Spanish galleon, Lloyd, Kawak, and Hachan, who had been there, there, were discussing how to escape. When all of a sudden the door to the hole opened and in stepped a new strange-looking man. The man was even hairier in the face, with a full long beard, metal on his chest, and a black hat with a long white feather. What a strange creature! I mean, what a strange creature! whispered Lloyd. But all the man heard was, Bah, bah, bah! Silence! cried the man. I am Captain General, Captain General Francisco Pizarro of His Majesty Charles I. Oh, bah! I can't understand me, Jose. Bring out the native Tupi medicine man we captured. He will cast one of his spells so we can understand these strange creatures and they can understand us. Yes, Capitan, said Jose. Cap Captain Jose left, and when he returned, it was with this little, old, darker-skinned man that Captain General Pizarro had called a Tupi medicine man? Old man, make me be able to talk with these creatures, said Pizarro, and I'll let you return to your family. So the old wizen, old wizen man mumbled some words and chants over the llamas and said, his Highness can now speak to these creatures. Thank you, oh, thank you, old one. You can go back to your cell. That is, <laughs> wickedly laughed Pizarro. You lied! You lied, Pizarro! May the Creator punish you for this! The old shaman said, screaming as he was dragged back to his cell. Now we are alone, my creatures, and now we can understand one another. I have some information I want to get from you, demanded Pizarro. Kawak stood firm and said firmly, You'll get nothing from us, you monster. You, you must let us go free, said Hachan the minstrel. Our Queen Alari, she will miss us. Good going, Hachan, said said Lloyd. You shouldn't tell him that much. Ah, so you do have a legendary queen of your people after all, like the legends have been saying, and only he, she can lead us to this peaceful grazing grounds of your people, where the mighty Incas hold their secret court. You llamas, for lack of a better name, for lack of a better name, llama will lead me to her, and she will lead me to the secret court. She will, she will, she will never tell you anything, and neither will we, cried Hachan. Hachan, shut up, said Kaw Kawak and Lloyd together. You will lead me to her, demanded Pizarro, or I will start by cutting you up, one by one, and eating you all, starting with young Hachan here. Now, what will it be? So after some pondering, Kawak finally whispered to Lloyd, I have an idea. Just follow me. All right, Pizarro, sir, if that is your real name. We will lead you to her, but you must promise me that you will do no harm to her or to any llamas, as you call us. Excellent, cried Pizarro. So Pizarro made plans to release only Kawak and Lloyd and to, lead the, and to keep the others back on the ship if they led them astray. Meanwhile, 
back at Queen Alari's gathering. So what should we do, Ayar? Ilaris asked. Yes, your majesty, we, ooh, your majesty, we, we will follow the scent of the strange men from a distance until we can get to where they are. But we we will remain in hiding. Then I will send Layla to to do her Pachaka Makadak and dance to them. We will see if they get enchanted or distracted or what. May Virkocha May Virkocha be with us. And so the Queen's retinue left stealthily through the forest trees on their padded llama feet until it led them to the seashore. There they are, said Aya. They are on that strange-looking boat thing on the water. But how on earth are we to get across the water? But how on earth are we, so, are we to get across the water? pondered Layla. Ah, Layla, you are going to go across on Guaira's back, said Ayar. So Layla mounted upon Guaira, and off Guaira went across the water super fast, so fast. A cushion of air was created under Guaira's padded llama feet. As they approached the ship, Guaira deposited Layla on the back end of the ship so no one could see her. And Guaira said, I'll be back if you need me. Good luck. And off she sped back to the shore. And there Layla was alone on the ship, seeking ever, sneaking ever so quiet and soft. I guess Lama's feet could are good for, for many things, searching being one of them. Most of the sailors and soldiers were all sleeping as she made her way to the prison hold, her super llama nose leading the way. Finally she got to the door of the llama's cell, of the llama's cell, the cell they were keeping the llamas. Psst! Psst! Are you guys in there? Kawak, Lloyd, it's me, Layla. We've come to rescue you. Layla! whispered Lloyd. Is that really you? Be careful. There's a man called Bizarro. I think he's the leader. He was just in here with us. Be careful. He may find you too. Thanks, Lloyd. I think I'll be fa- But as soon as she began those words, she felt a cold piece of metal hit her in the back of her llama head. So, I have another one. It was Pizarro standing right behind her. You thought you could come and rescue your little friends, did you? Well, not for long. Now you shall join them in, in taking me to your queen. Layla spun around and cried, Never! And bam, and with that she saw and heard no more. For Pizarro butted her head with his sword. When Layla awoke, she was tied up in the cell with the other llamas. Oh, great, Layla. I told you to be careful, said Lloyd. So the next day, Pizarro ordered the llamas, Lloyd and Kawak, to be brought out and taken by Dingy to the shore. All right, men. We shall take fifty soldiers to go with us. I think that will be enough. So they all left and arrived on the shore. All right, you llamas, lead the way. Take me to your queen at once. Pizarro demanded. Do you smell that, Lloyd? Queen Lari's gang are close. They aren't far. They, they off. They, they must have come with Layla. I hope she's doing well back on the ship. Don't worry, Kawak. Sit. Oh, don't worry, Kawak. Said Lloyd. She'll be able to take care of herself. It's Hachan I'm actually more concerned with. So Kawak and Lloyd led Pizarro and his men until they reached the royal llama encampment of Queen Alari. Well, your smelliness, said Kawak, here is our queen. And out stepped Queen Alari, bedecked in her most beautiful flower crown. Her most beautiful flower 
crack crown. What? Who, who are you, strange creatures who dare invade my llama kingdom? And how dare you, Kawak and Lloyd, lead them here? And where is my friend Layla? Ilari bleated at the top of her lungs. All in good time, my llama queen, said Peraro. But first I would like some information from you. Where is the location of your fabled llama grazing lands in the mountains? I must find them. And why should I tell you, sir, who brutally comes in and terrorizes my people with your riffraff? I am Captain General Francisco Pizarro of His Majesty Charles I of Spain, and you will tell me where the fabled grazing lands of the Loma are, or your little friends back on my ship will die, including your friend Leila, laughed Pizarro wickedly. Leila, no, you monster! But I do not... But I do know you would keep your word if I tell you what, if I tell you. But how do I know you'd keep your word even if I did tell you, asked Ilari. You don't. You'll just have to trust me, said Pizarro. Mean back, meanwhile, back on the ship, Leila and Hachan the minstrel were trying to come up with a plan themselves to escape the ship with their comrades. I'll try and gnaw through the rope, said Hachan. Okay. Good idea. I'm going to try and lure that guard outside the door. So Leila started doing a magnificent dance of supreme beauty. It drew the attention of the guard. What in Jesus, Mary and Joseph is that strange llama doing, the guard said. I've got to go in there and settle it down. So he opened the door and went in. Hey, you, settle down with that. And you, he said yelling at Hachan, stop biting on that rope. And just as he turned to leave, he found a strange magical force pulling him to Layla's dance. Oh, so, so beautiful, and so sleepy. Oh. Oh. Down he went straight to the ground. Excellent, said Layla. Now, here, let me help you with that, as she helped Hachan free himself. And they freed all the others, but all biting at once. All right, you guys, now we've got to be very quiet as we sneak on the ship. As they were leaving the cell, they heard a strange weeping coming from another cell. Layla peered in. Inside the cell was another strange man, but of the kind the llamas were more used to. Old, darker-skinned, hairless on the face. Hachan, said Layla, give me the guard's keys. Well, I'll try to free this poor man. So Layla opened the door and, and the old man stood up. I thank you, old noble beast, for freeing me. I am called Jakira. I am an old man of my people, the Tupi. I was captured by that horrible man, Pizarro, many moons ago, and I wish to find my family and people again, but I fear that they are lost. No thanks to these horrible savage men. I sense you creatures are in need of my help as well. It is the least I can do. Come, let us leave this horrible boat. So Jakira and Layla worked a spell of enchantment over all the men on the ship, putting them all to sleep. But how shall we get all your llamas across the water to the shore? The small dinghy boats of these men are too small for all you llamas. Just then, a great whoosh of wind passed over the ship, and there stood Guaira before them. Layla, I am here. It seems you're... you're Escape pretty easily. But who is this? He is a friend who has been badly mistreated by these strange ones. But come, we must get back to our queen. What is happening on the shore anyway, Leila demanded in urgency. That is for the very reason I, I escaped the shore and rushed back here to check on you again, said Guaira. Pizarro and his men with Lloyd and Kawak landed and found us and our queen, and he demanded she reveal the secret whereabouts of our ancestral sacred grazing lot grounds. Can you imagine? Well, Queen Ilari agreed at first, so long as he harms no one, but then he declined, and a great fighting broke out between Kawak and Lloyd and the other llamas and Pizarro and his men. Apparently, they'd had enough of Pizarro's treatment of them and our queen, so now I must return, all of you at once. 
one by one to the shore. We just need as much help as we can get. These pale-faced men are wreaking havoc with their boomsticks. So Guaira dashed each of them across the water. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Till they were all on the other shore at once where the Queen's battle was taking place. The battle and the fighting was tremendously fierce. Guaira dashed grabbing rifles here and there out of their hands at super speed, and Jakira casted sleeping spells of enchantment with Layla dancing a Pachakamak. Queen Arari whacked a few pale men upside the head herself until on Pizarro, until only Pizarro and his right man Jose were left. Bring the bad men before me, said, cried Queen Ilari, so that I may pass judgment upon them. So Pizarro and his right-hand man, Captain Jose, were brought before Queen Ilari, on their feet, trembling in fear for what the llamas might do to them. You too have caused much strife and panic among my people and my realm. I will let you return to your ship and to your own home, wherever that may be, but you must promise me that you will never return to our home again, for if you do, I will not be as forgiving, so forgiving next time, and also promise you will give up your quest to find our secret ancestral grazing lands, because I tell you now, you will never find them, and if you try, death and a bad ending will come to you. Yes, yes, yes. Anything, pleaded Pizarro and Jose. We promise, uh, I promise I will return to Spain and stay there, never once more, to challenge your might, O Lama Queen. So with that, Pizarro and his mate were brought back to their ship, in which they left post-haste, never to be seen or heard from again. And now you may ask what happened to her Queen Elari and her Lamas. Well, from that day forth, they redoubled their watch on the Lama Kingdom and the sacred ancestral grazing lands of Machu Picchu, and were kept safe and secret from that day forth. And as for the Queen and her best friend, Leila Lama, she went on to perform sacred dances in the sacred Lama temples for years to come, and she married Usui Lama and had five Kriya baby Lamas, and Lloyd... Well, he, he excelled so well at llama cooking that he started his own llama cafe called Inkari, Inkari Llama Cafe. He married Urpi Lama and had two Kriya, little baby llamas. Guaira went on to marry Kawak and became the second command of the llama guard and commander of the troops. Ayar, the high llama priest, lived out his life in, in plenty with his old wife Abanchai, guiding their queen well. What about Queen Ilari herself? Well, she finally found her soulmate and king, Charapa, Rainbow Lama. And together they lived and ruled together, well, to the end of their days, which were exceptionally long. But I suppose you are now asking what happened to that kind-hearted, wise old Tupi holy man, the one who helped Layla on the ship? Well, Lord Jakira of the Tupi tribe never did, sadly to say, find his family or his tribe again. And they say he still wanders the land as a great immortal, helping the lamas and the peoples wherever and however he could. And that is the story of the Lama Queen. And so ends my tale at last. The end. And Hachan, well, he continued to play his panpipes. <laughs> making merry throughout the Lama Kingdom, 